This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm Marsha Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. Navigating the journey is dedicated to exploring the options and choices for the end of life care and to assist people to talk about their wishes. It's time to transform our culture so we shift from not talking about these things to talking about it. It's time to share the way we want to live our lives at the end of our lives and to communicate about the kind of care we want and don't want. We believe that the place to begin this is not in the intensive care, it, but it is now to talk about it. According to the Hawaii State Plan on Aging, by 2035, one third of the population here in Hawaii will be over 60. I'm quite a bit over 60, and predominantly female. Over the next three years, we must add another two million home care jobs to the three million we already have just to keep up with the growing trend. Together, together, we're going to explore these paths. Together, we can make these difficult conversations easier. Together, we can make sure that our own wishes and those of our loved ones are expressed. Behind every great movement stands a team of passionate organizers, communicationers, and visionaries, and meet our own. Pedro. He is the Hawaii Community Organizer for Caring Across Generations. I hope I got that right. It's a national movement of families, caregivers, people with disabilities, and aging. These are people working to transform those times at the end of life. The caregivers. He's also the campaign director for Care for Our Kupuna, which I am the local movement to create a legislative plan for long-term care, ah, including the Kapuna Caregivers Program. Mm -hmm. And so I want you to meet this beautiful young man who has no idea about the end of life or being a Kapuna. <laughs> <laughs> but it's people like, like this young man with all this energy and drive to care for us that we have this today as a beautiful guest, Pedro. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> well, what a great introduction. The only thing I disagree with you is that it, it's not just a good issue. It really is going to take all of us, including our very youngest, yes. which I'm not, and the very youngest. <laughs> I wish I were, but, um, but definitely it's going to take all of us to be able to work on this. Yes, mm -hmm. and so that's why I wanted to talk to you uh, to tell our audience exactly what is it we're doing as a community, mm -hmm. what we're not doing as a community, and then how we can help those of us that can help. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things that we're looking at in Caring Across Generations is leading in the United States to be able to do is to revolutionize the way that we look at care. One of the things that we don't like to talk about, which is a sort of a buzzword, is the silver tsunami. I you love know. that. Well, the only thing is that tsunami has a negative connotation, I know. right? But, so but, but it is a wave. It, it is, is a wave. wave. So we like to think about it as a wave because you can surf a wave. Yes. You know, a wave can, can have a lot of positive and it's needed for, for our shores and it's needed. Well, I was at one of those stores that has a discount for seniors and the woman asked me for my ID card and I said, can't you look at me? <laughs> and she said, no, everybody's got white hair now. I said, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, so, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but we like to think about, we have the opportunity right now to, to create action so that we're dealing with prevention rather than dealing with a crisis later on. And there's opportunity for business, there's opportunity for our families, there's opportunity for our young people to t grow into mm -hmm. jobs, as you're talking about. There are so many um, positions that need to be created in Hawaii alone. So that's a great opportunity for our young people to start preparing for those jobs of the future. If we're talking about jobs of the future, care, care professions are one of those. One of the things that Caring Across Generations is working on, though, is in making sure that those are livable wages, that those, are, uh, those care professions um, are certainly livable wages. What, 
what is a care profession? What, what all do, oh, you, yeah. do you do? That's a great question. So, you know, when we talk about caring professions, it can be anything from a home health aid worker to a nurse practitioner to somebody who's working in an adult daycare center, um, somebody who comes in to provide transportation services for the elderly. And so it includes a really a variety of, of different services that provide care on the home. Um, and one of the things that we are particularly looking at, the model that we're looking at here in Hawaii, is that the government or any given organization cannot supplant the care that is being provided by family members, by unpaid caregivers. Mm -hmm. um, there's just too much that are unpaid. We call it the silent army, that are often suffering alone, doing this care alone. You know, there's not enough money in anybody's budget to be able to do what they do because they, they estimate, I think ARP estimated something like $11 billion or, or $2 billion in Hawaii alone that they provide in unpaid care. Well, I'll, I'll give you a classic example of that. My mother, who I thought was the strongest person in the whole world. Oh, my. I'm just glad it wasn't me. Yeah, I am, too. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought my mother was the strongest person ever. Mm -hmm. I guess all children do. And then... One day she was fine, then she fell and she was alone. So it took us three days to discover that she oh had fallen. One day she's great, and the next day I am a caregiver. Yeah. And I knew nothing mm -hmm. about being a caregiver. So my question to you is, how do we, I, I hate to say prepare for that, mm -hmm. but so many people are in that category like, one day everything's fine, the next day it's not. Yeah. How do, how do we prepare for that? And, and that, what you're describing is what most people who go, have to become caregivers go through. There, there's no preparation. There's no, there's no, you know, sort of how do you prepare for grandpa having a stroke? Or right. how do you prepare for mom falling? Or how do you prepare for an accident to happen? I mean, you, you, you simply don't prepare psychologically for those kind of, for those kind of situations. As far as preparing um, financially, um, there is obviously long-term care insurance, which we still encourage everybody to be able to seek out um, because we certainly don't know when that will happen. Mm -hmm. So similar to life insurance, what a lot of people don't realize is that life insurance doesn't cover uh, things like becoming disabled due to a stroke or a fall mm -hmm. or something that doesn't happen at work. A lot of times they'll cover work injuries, but they won't cover personal injuries. So we always encourage everybody to look at long-term care insurance if they're able to afford it. Well, it wasn't so much the finances is that, well, I, I just didn't know what to do. Yeah. Physically, emotionally, well, now what? Mm -hmm. and they, the, what? When we brought her home from the hospital, it was, well, you do this, this I'll cover it. Are there classes? Are there? Yes. Are there that mm -hmm. take ordinary people mm -hmm. that to get ready for this? Because yeah. we, I guess we have to assume that at some point, mm -hmm we will have to deal with this. So there's a, there's a couple of resources, which is great, and because that tends to be, it's that psychological aspect that really wipes us out, that really makes it difficult for us to be able to, to go on with our everyday. Um, so there are classes, w one of the face-to-face -face classes uh, that they have is at St. Francis. St. Francis holds um, caregiver classes, everything from bathing uh, an individual to talking about finances, talking about things like power of attorney um, if needed. So it does prepare you both psychologically and physically to be able to, to care for, for somebody in your family. Each county also has um, an area disability uh, resource agency, um, aging and disabilities resource, um, uh, AG, ADRCs, aging and disability resource center. Um, and those uh, organizations that are provided, funded by the government, uh, provide care assistance to caregivers and to elderly if they need it, including trainings and including um, providing, connecting them with specific services that they might need. So now if you say, well, everybody in my family is doing okay, mm -hmm. but I'm at an age that I'm sure that somebody's going to have an issue, can I just go to these classes even though I don't have someone? I think that's a great idea. I mean, the, uh, Rosalind Carter said that there's three kinds of people in the world, those who are currently caregivers, those who will be caregivers, and those who need caregivers. So then the idea is that all of us will somehow um, be touched okay. by caregiving. Yes. Um, and 
as you said in your opening, it, it's 100 percent right. We're, we're not talking about it, and we're certainly not preparing for it if we're not talking about it. So that's going to classes ahead of time, understanding the issue is incredibly important, and talking to your family members about it. How would you take care of a loved one of your parents or your grandparents if, if and when they do need caregivers? Do you have the financial assistance? Would your job be affected? Um, who would be the, the primary caregiver in your home? Um, all of those conversations certainly need to be, be having in families, um, as well as end-of-life care decisions. But what we find is that there's been a great deal of education about end-of-life care decisions, but there's a lot of years before end-of-life. Well, before there, yes, <laughs> and, and that's, that was, that's where we are with you, is, mm -hmm. is this middle ground. Mm -hmm. um, yes, we, uh, navigating the journey has been about the end of life and we have talked about the end of life and all of these issues but now okay let's get from here to there mm -hmm. let's see what what happens there yeah and so the Kapuna caregivers program which is one of the things that we have helped champion here in the state um, along with a lot of help from other um, organizations such as FACE um, the Alzheimer's Coalition, you know, m many organizations that have come together. Uh, the idea is that caregivers need our help. Uh, so what if we created a system where rather than only focusing on the elderly and what the elderly need as help, what our kupuna need is the people that are providing their care, they need our help too. Well, uh, Pedro, I'll tell you what, let's go to break mm -hmm. and when we come back, Let's talk about Kapuna Care and what you're doing to get us ready to do whatever it is that we have to do to take care of our Kapuna, to be a Kapuna. Wonderful. Okay, Thank you. we'll be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Good afternoon, my name is Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green, a program on Think Tech Hawaii we show at three o'clock in the afternoon every other Monday. My guests are specialists both from here and the mainland on energy efficiency, which means you do more for less electricity and you're generally safer and more comfortable while you're keeping dollars in your pocket. Freedom, is it a feeling? Is it a place? Is it an idea? At Dive Heart, we believe freedom is all of these and more, regardless of your ability. Dive Heart wants to help you escape the bonds of this world and defy gravity. Since 2001, Dive Heart has helped children, adults, and veterans of all abilities go where they have never gone before. Dive Heart has helped them transition to their new normal. Search DiveHeart.org and share our mission with others, and in the process, help people of all abilities imagine the possibilities in their lives. Aloha, and I'm back and we are navigating the journey. And today we are talking with this lovely young man, Pedro, is all about Kupuna Care and Kupuna Caregivers. Mm -hmm. And so we're gonna talk about the legislation that the governor signed, what that means, and how that affects us all. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we get all that in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Pedro, tell me what is what is the legislation, Kapuna sure. Caregivers? So the, uh, the governor signed this past legislative season, uh, the Kapuna Caregivers Act, which establishes the Kapuna Caregivers uh, program within the Executive Office on Aging. We're really happy about the way that it, that it turned out because there was not a single no vote from any legislator at any of the committees or any of the, of the, any of the uh, joint uh, sessions. And what we're seeing is that you know there, there's no bad guy in this issue. Everybody wants to be able to take care of our kupuna. The idea is how do we do that, and is it a priority for our state? And we're glad to be able to see that this passed in, in showing that it is a priority for our legislators and for our governor. Um, what the bill does and what the, the program does, it, it establishes $70 a day in help in services for people who are working caregivers um, in taking care of a kupuna at home. So this is a little bit of a different way to look at it. Rather than, than only looking at the needs that the kupuna has, it's also taking a, uh, into account the fact that it's usually a family unit mm -hmm. that is taking care of our kupuna and being able to help them age in place. Well, now, um, we have an audience that is not all just 
Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So would you tell us what a kupuna is? Oh, of course, yes. <laughs> kupuna is what, what, what we, you know, uh, sort of layman's term might be our, our, our grandparents. But yes. certainly it's somebody who has wisdom and respect and has earned the, e age, the age of, of, of having the wisdom and, and, and respect of others that, that we don't have in our younger years. So, so that people are listening to us talk about kapuna, kapuna, I thought, yeah. well, maybe we ought to That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> say what a kapuna is, yes. And, and it's male and female. Oh, definitely, yes, and definitely yeah. male and female. Um, and so what the program, uh, the, the eligibility for the program is that somebody has to be over the, 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 the elderly who's, who's being given the care has to be over the age of 60 or above. Um, and they have to have need assistance with two uh, daily living. Um, tasks. So they have to have a, a family member at home. Mm, a, a family member who's providing care. That no, I meant, I said that wrong. Mm -hmm. So the person that gets the $70 a day is working and has exactly someone at home that needs that, care. Exactly, exactly. Oh, okay. That's over the age of 60 and needs two uh, assistance with two um, daily uh, tasks of living. Um, and the person who is working has to be working 30 hours or more outside of the home. Now we get a lot of questions of saying, well, some people have had to leave the, their work to be able or had to reduce their hours. Um, unfortunately, as much as we would love to be able to provide this, we, we want this to be to provided for everybody who needs assistance because of the funding that was allocated by the legislature, there had to be some priorities. And so the idea is that somebody who was working 30 hours or more would probably need a little bit more assistance. Um, and so we wanted to be able to start there. The initial program is short in nature. We're going to have to go back to the legislature this coming next, n next legislative season to be able to ask for the program to be funded. But at least at the very initial juncture, what we want to be able to determine is how large is the issue. We think that the issue is fairly large. I think it's our large, yes. yes. But, but we want to be able to have data to be able to say, you know, we know exactly how large this issue is. And we know exactly how much money it will take to be able to to make a real dent in this. Um, uh, do you have, I know it's early in the program, but do you have a, any idea how many people are participating? We don't, so the, the program, uh, what we hear from Executive Office on Aging is the program will be ready to launch in January. There might be some uh, workup that happens ahead of that, um, and there certainly is all of the, since it just passed a few months ago, the Executive Office on Aging is working very hard to create the guidelines and all of those different things, eligibility, um, that will be needed. But what we know is just from the press coverage about the bill passing that our website and Executive Office on Aging Office has received hundreds of requests. So that's without, without any prompting of asking people to call um, or even providing them a number to call. They figure out where to call and have been calling and asking and saying, I need this in, uh, right away. Mm -hmm. So. Once we actually start recruiting for the program, we can only imagine the kind of response that there will be. Uh, well, I guess the reason I'm asking, the next legislative session starts in January. So if you're going back to yes. the legislature, you don't even know what to ask for. Well, we're hoping that by that time we'll have some sort of list to be able to say, here is the type of, of requests that, ha that are coming in. So that's exactly right. Is we hope to be able to do some of that upfront work in November, December, to be able to at least have, um, be able to see that tip of the iceberg at that point so that we're able to come in uh, with something sensible that we'll be able to make. You know, what is that tipping point? When is it that, that we will be able to make a difference? And, and we're looking at it not just from a family angle, but also from a business angle. These are working caregivers. When, when mom needs care, care at home and you have to call out sick, that affects business. Yes. That's, that's what we're trying to change as well, saying, well, what you can do is use the service to be able to provide that respite care. So you can stay at work and mom would be able to get the care that she needs for a few hours. Or uh, I always use this example. I have a very good friend who um, his mother developed lung cancer. And she is a vet and had to be taken from her home in Waipahu to uh, Tripler. Tripler. Um, he lives in town. So in order to do that, he had to take almost the entire day oh, off of course he does. to be able to bring her into town, take her back home, mm -hmm. and then would have a few hours to go back into work. With the Kapuna Caregiver uh, Program, he would be able to ask for transportation services. So he could still go to the appointment, but then if the transportation is taken care of, then maybe he only has to take a few hours off of work rather than taking an entire day off. The, yeah. So that's now, good for him and business. Well, yes, because 
well, as a business person, this is, it takes time out of the day, mm -hmm. but th that person takes sick leave. So it's really taken away from their own sick leave it's, if, if they need. Yeah, and, and what we often talk about is, you know, absenteeism, you know, yes. the, the idea of, of, of being absent, you know, whether it's for your own health care, taking your family, but there's also something called so, presenteeism, right. which is the idea is, you know, you're talking about, you gave the experience about your mother. I'm sure that, that when that first happens, you can't just go back to work and just have your mind clear and, and oh, say, Oh, it was oh. like, no, oh my, no. Exactly. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. I, I, I was totally stunned. Exactly. And, and, and usually it's a crisis mode it at, was. at the beginning. And, and, and so we're looking at, at those particular situations so that a person is able to go to go to work as quickly as possible, be able to earn the income, and still make sure that they're having their, their family members taken care of. Because it takes a lot of, of your, not just your mind, but your, your, your actual health takes a hit when you're a caregiver, as, as I'm sure you know. Uh, that your own personal health gets affected uh, by being a caregiver. It, and, well, I don't need to go into all those details, but you're right. It, it comes from a place that I had never been before, mm -hmm. emotionally, physically. This had never happened before, mm -hmm. and I wasn't prepared for it. Like I said, I thought she was, I thought that she rose the sun and set the moon. I mean, I, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. now what do you mean? I got, who, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Oh, definitely, and that's what we hear time and time again. So what we hear is, you know, $70 isn't going to provide 24 around the clock care. I mean, it's certainly, but what we hear time and time again is saying, if I just had a few hours of help, mm -hmm. somebody who's trained, who would be able to take my hand and show me what I'm supposed to do, that would make a world of difference. Well, it, it would. If I had just known, hey, I can pick up the phone and say, I need help, and there's somebody that knows Mm -hmm. what to do. Mm -hmm. And so that's exactly what this is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. and, and the idea is that, again, this is ins we did a lot of research here in Hawaii about um, what kind of program might work best. And what we heard from all of our local families, from majority of our local families saying, this is my responsibility. I want to take care of mom. I want to take care of whoever. But I just need help. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't know what to do. Or sometimes I need to go shopping. Sometimes I can't take off work. During those times, I need help. So if you can just help me during those times, well, then I think I can make it. Yep. I, I think that's the big thing is just those, those moments mm -hmm. that you really need. And then, of course, there's, there's all this new medication. And now what? How do I mm -hmm. administer the, this? How do I move, the, turn the person over? How do I do all of the things mm -hmm. that, you know, since you had babies, you haven't had to do this. <laughs> it's like, oh, dear. Well, and, we talk, and, and, and there are families that are having to take care of babies and the, and the and, grandparents. And the yes. grandparents as well. We call that the sandwich generation. You know, the, they're, they're sandwiched in and they said, well, it's probably all that they can have time to eat as well. It's yes. a sandwich. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, between all of their, uh, and, and what you're describing is exactly right. So one, another, another um, person who talked about his caregiving experiences, it was a, a male that was taking care of his mother. And he would say, you know, I could do everything except bather. Bather was always a really difficult part. And if I could have had somebody just come in and help me with that portion, I could have handled everything else. Because that was just difficult for our relationship. He says, we just don't expect your, the, yes. to have to do that for your mother. Yeah. Um, and so he expressed, it was all boys in his family. So he said, it was going to be one of us. <laughs> um, so those, those are the kind of things that, that the Kapuna Caregivers Program will be able to accomplish. So. Now, you are the advocate. What does that mean? Um, well, it means that I work with people like you and, and other organizations to be able to educate the community about, about what the issue is, try to uh, gather the other advocates to be able to, to gather stories of, of what does it really look like if a program were to work, and then trying to connect all of those stories with legislators so that they're able to create legislation that uh, makes sense for the community. So typically, it's a lot, of, um, a lot of talking, a lot of trying to connect people who are interested with the story to be able to make sure that the solutions that the legislators are coming up with make sense. One last question. Where are the unions in this? We have definitely received a lot of support from the unions. They understand that um, 
the un Local 5 has been very right. supportive, ILWU, um, and I think other unions would be coming to the mix if I make a little bit more time to be able to meet with them and explain because they, the, the unions that have come aboard understand this is good for business. This mm -hmm. is exactly what our, um, our members need is support with their families mm -hmm. so that they can concentrate on work and they don't, they, if, if somebody doesn't call out sick or leave work early or leave the job for us early, it doesn't, it, you know, it, it impacts their social security, it impacts their own benefits, so we don't want to do that. We want them to be able to receive as many benefits as possible. So most unions are definitely um, involved in this and, and, and are happy about it. Now, as an advocate, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you reach out to the public, okay, so here we are, the public. How, how can we assist? Okay. What can we do? Well, definitely go to our careforkupuna.org website. Um, that's care, the number four, in kupuna.org. And what you can do there is if, if, there, if you're interested in the program, we're taking names now so that when the program is launched, we contact you directly and we say the program is launched, you can now sign up for it. So that, and then once the legislative season starts, if you, are, if you have a story, if you have any interest on this, we will need your testimonies to be able to tell legislators to be able to say this is important for me. We think that there's money out there for, for, for these issues. It's just a matter of priorities. So we, as the advocates, need to be able to say, this is a priority for us, and this is a priority for our community. So again, tell our audience how they can get involved. What, so, what is the uh, web page? So it's care for Kupuna, and that's care, the number four, in kupuna.org. And there is a sign up right there on the front page so that you'd be able to get our information, get information about the program, and then you'll receive information when it's time to act and contact your legislators. It'll be all through there. So uh, not just, well, I don't need help, but how can I testify? How can I write? What, what are the other things other than definitely help? Definitely on our website, uh, we will need testimony. We will need people to come out. To, we will have rallies. Um, none of that is quite planned yet, um, but um, if you can sign up to be able to receive the information, or people can always email me directly, and my email is just pedro at caringacross.org. Great. Okay. How wonderful. So please, please contact Pedro. Again, thank you so much for spending the time with us, and we'll see you next week.